Our story of what may someday unfold here in space begins in Japan back in the 1500s. It's where emerging science meets this ancient art form. Origami. It begins with a flat piece of paper, as demonstrated here by Wendy Lowe at the Murakami Museum in Florida. Once folded and folded and folded again, the beauty of geometry allows what was a simple piece of paper to take on a complicated shape. Origami uh, comes from the word ori, oru. Oru means to fold, so that's where ori comes from. Gami is from kami, which means paper. So origami is folding paper. Very simple. One of the things I like about folding so much is it's really between the mathematical world and the physical world. Dr. Choma says it wasn't until the 1920s when a German-born American artist influenced Western engineers by taking flat items and folding them into useful products beyond art. Eventually, the goal became self-folding origami. So gravity is playing a role here. So whenever you fold a piece of paper or any geometry, it has a certain relaxed state that's specific to gravity. And so in this case, this has been programmed to, for this to be the relaxed state. Um, but as you let go of it, again, it goes back to that state. But so the gravity is helping orient the structure properly. Which brings us to Auburn University and a lab where Dr. Russell Malin, associate professor in the Department of Aerospace Engineering, wondered, could origami self-fold? We have liftoff. <laughs> If there were no gravity, would it self-fold correctly in space? If so, it could solve a vexing problem. How to avoid wasting volume in a rocket's limited cargo hold when the payload is so oddly shaped? If this were the cargo hold... And as you see, when we put it all in one container, there's quite a lot of empty space. The already folded origamis fill it up. But look at all that inefficiency. But what if they were back as simple flat pieces of paper? So much more would fit. The question, how could a flattened piece of equipment use smart materials to fold on its own if there were no gravity? To simplify, Dr. Malin says, consider this tiny piece of polymer and compare it with our everyday plastic bottle. So right now it wants to spring back. If I squeeze it, it springs back. But if you heat it up, it actually shrink back to its shape that it had before they blew it into that mold. So in some ways, these two samples, these two materials are made the same way. They heat it up, they stretch it out. In this case, it's into a sheet. In this case, it's into a water bottle. So it's flattened out here. Yes. Bottle here. Bottle here. And then they cool it down very quickly so it holds that shape. If you heat this water bottle up, it'll actually start to shrink. Shrink, it'll yes. collapse? Yes, it, it, will, it will collapse, it'll go back to its original memorized shape. Unknown, how does what's called a shape memory polymer self-fold if there were no gravity? On a jet designed to simulate the zero gravity of space, the self-folding origami gets its first test. As captured graphically here on FlightAware, the Zero-G Boeing 727 flies like a roller coaster. From the top at 33,000 feet to the bottom at around 17,000 feet, that plane drops. The up and down flight is one you may remember from math class. It's called a parabola. In that drop, we get simulated zero gravity. And that's the experiment underway here. Will a polymer that's been flattened out self-fold into a predetermined shape when it's hit by a precise beam of intense heat? Remember, the challenge here is it works when there's gravity, but will it happen when there's zero gravity? This experiment, a team effort. So think of it as you are pretty much injecting a memory into the polymer itself. A memory. A memory polymer, and then you heat it up, and then it remembers that memory. <laughs> so it goes back to its original state. Pushing over! On board the Zero-G flight, NASA's Seth Schischler. So we have a, a pretty good idea of the effects on the ground in the lab, but this is the only real chance that we get to actually test in the space environment. And so we get to actually understand if things are going to react the same way. Whether the plastic right. will fold yeah. differently. Can you really figure this out when you only have about 30 seconds of what we are now, weightless? Yeah, so it's only about 20 or 30 seconds. And so it's really hard to conduct that experiment within that time 
So there are like little miniature NASCAR pit crews. They, they're very timed, but that's the complexity of doing this in a space-like environment. Post-flight, an on-the-spot first review. Did it work? Um, we had a couple samples that folded the way we expected. So this one here actually is probably the best result that we had on this test. This really was a, a learning experience for us with it being our first microgravity flight. Um, we have a lot of things that we'll be discussing on the drive home, but I, I'm looking forward to the next flight. One small step for self-folding origami, one giant leap for the possibilities. Have you guys done like multiple joint folds uh, of stuff? That, that's that's, that's kind of on the schedule. And okay. so, yeah, if we perfect. could do one and then a second that okay. folds it around. Yeah, perfect. There are these concepts with origami of folding and unfolding that then if you get frustrated easily, you say, sometimes say, I wish somebody could fold this for me. Well, this would fold it for you. This was fun, but I think uh, expanding scientific knowledge on smart materials and what we've done is uh, I think that's the most gratifying part about this project. NASA already knows it's possible to fold up equipment like origami and then get it to mechanically unfold in space. That's what they did with the James Webb Telescope. Could self-folding be next? Hopeful progress that began with a look way back. What is the lesson that we are looking back at origami to use into the future? Mm -hmm. You know, there's always room to innovate. Um, we can take this, this art form that's hundreds of years old and still come up with a new way to use it in high-tech applications. Origami. I, I, I'm just surprised. Mm -hmm. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been doing this for quite a while, but it's, it's still really impressive when you get an experience like this. I don't think I could fathom what could be the possibility in the future. What's old is now new again.